Hi everyone, I'm Naomi of Conscious Healthy Mama, and today I want to share with you some yoga poses that you can do that will not only increase the mobility of your hips, but they'll also increase the strength of your hips. What? Strength and mobility? Well, here's the thing. Strength and mobility actually go hand in hand. So a lot of times we think of strength and we associate it with the idea of being tight and compact. You know, so you see like a bodybuilder and their muscles are all like tight and uh, you know. Um, but but the, the truth is, is that a long muscle is a strong muscle. And there are a lot of ways for muscles to be strong, but you know, the really important thing to remember is that in order to have strength in a certain area of your body, there also has to be a greater range of motion, right? You have to be able to use the joint and the muscle in a variety of ways in order for it to be really strong and stable. So what we're focusing on today are things that you can do that will create both actions, and in fact will enhance both actions, both creating strength and mobility. Sounds pretty awesome, right? So let's have that. Come on to stand. And take your feet wide apart. And keeping your legs really steady, so your feet are, are wide apart, toes pointing forward. Give your knees a little bit of a bend and fold forward to touch the ground. Okay, now with your hands on the ground, it's fairly easy to shift your hips from side to side. And you can just bend one knee, shift over, and go to the other side. Okay, and your hips are working. You're creating a little bit of mobility, a lot of movement in your hips, a lot of movement in your legs. But you have a little extra support, right, with your hands. So, keep your knees bent. Bring your hands up to your hips, it's a little awkward, and if you need to, turn your feet out so that your knees are pointing more in line with your ankles. And then bring your palms together in front of your heart, just to take a little bit more of the weight out of your legs out of your hands rather, and bend your knees and shift over to the right, and then come back through center and shift over to the left. Now here's what's really important. When you shift over, make sure that you're not like tucking your butt <laughs> and pulling forward, because that's going to put a lot more pressure on your knees, and it's going to tighten you up in your hips instead of creating more movement. So stick your butt way back behind you, like it's going somewhere on its own. <laughs> and then come back through center, shift over, Move your butt way back behind you. Now, if you need to, you can have your hands in your hips instead. That's fine. <clears throat> but if you can, palms in front of your chest. And the more that you go back and forth, the lower you might be able to go. Okay, the lower you might be able to go. But you gotta keep moving your butt back, your thighs back. You just go back and forth. And I guarantee. And after you've been doing this for about a minute, like we have, you're going to be able to go a lot longer. You're going to feel a lot more movement through your hips. A lot more work through your hips. One more time over to the left. And then come on back to center. Keep your knees bent. And now, <laughs> push your legs straight. Turn your left foot in. Turn your right foot out. Okay, take a full breath in, and as you exhale, bend your right knee. And as you bend your right knee, just hang out here in Warrior Two, totally cash, like you do this all the time, like you watch TV like this. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe if you're a yoga teacher, you watch TV like this, or if you're really into building strength in your legs. Okay, now the longer you're here, the more your hips have to work because your legs are doing two very different things. And make sure that your knee is going directly out over your second and third toes, that it's not tipping in. Super important. And then straighten your legs. That was about 30 seconds. Turn your right foot in. Left foot up. Bend your knee. And as you bend your knee, you actually think of it as that you're moving from your hips. You're not just lunging into your front leg from your left knee, but that your hips, as that you're pushing them forward off of your left thigh, are doing the bulk of the action. Okay, keep this right leg really strong and really steady. Your upper inner thighs might start to shake with enthusiasm. That's totally fine. It's completely normal. Keep firming up your legs. Breathe. And then straighten your left leg. Turn your left foot in. Okay, turn your right foot out. Same idea. Okay, bend your right knee. 
But see if you can move it from your hips. And I'll do that again so it's really clear. Instead of just lunging my entire body forward towards my right leg, I'm going to move my hips down towards the earth. The action is coming from the center of my pelvis. My right thigh starts to go lower. My right knee goes to a 90 degree angle. Okay, now, palms in front of your chest. Bend your left knee. And then go back to warrior two. So you shift, bend your left knee. And then go back, warrior two. Bend your left knee. You can add your arms if you want. Go back to warrior two with your right knee bent. Palms together, bend your left knee. And then go back to warrior two. One more time, bend your left knee. And then go back to warrior two. So you're moving through your hips to create the action. Okay, now straighten your right leg. Bring your left hand to your left thigh, left arm alongside your ears. You're just opening up space. And then bend your right knee, warrior two. Straighten your right leg. Right arm goes up. And then from your hips, warrior two. And then do it again. Straighten your right leg. And then keep your left leg strong. Come on into warrior two. Okay, bring your palms together in front of your chest this time. See if you can do it without your arms. Straighten your leg. And then bend one more time. Straighten your leg. And then bend. And then straighten your right leg. Turn your right foot in. Left foot out. From your legs. Bend your left knee. Oh yeah. So again, think of it not as like this lunging forward into your left leg, but move your hips straight down as your left thigh goes parallel to the floor. Make sure your knee is still in line with your ankle. Right leg is strong. Palms together in front of your chest. Bend your right knee so you shift over. And then go back to warrior two. Bend your right knee so you shift to the right. Left leg goes straight. And then back to warrior two with your left knee bent. Bend your right knee so you shift over. <laughs> and then go back to warrior two. Add the arms, why not? Bend your right knee. And then warrior two. Then one more time, palms together, bend your right knee. And then go out, warrior two. And then straighten your left leg or reach your left arm up all the way up. Should feel kind of good, actually. And then bend, warrior two. But have the action come from your legs, not from the momentum of your arms. So straighten your left leg, stretch. And then warrior two. Straighten your left leg, keep your right leg really strong. And then come back into warrior two, and then do it without your arms. Straighten your left leg, lean back, and then bend, warrior two. Last one, straighten, keep your legs strong, and then bend, warrior two. Okay, and then turn your left foot in. Oh, release your arms for just a sec. So now we're going to add this into triangle pose. So the only difference here is that when you go to bend your knee, the ball of your right foot is going to come up, and then you're going to reach back in a triangle. It'll kind of make sense when you get there, but for now, hands at your hips, firm up your left leg, lengthen up through both sides of your body, and stretch over your right. You can bring your right fingertips to the floor, to your shin, or palms in front of your chest to make it a little bit more interesting. But totally up to you, wherever <laughs> you want to be. Yeah, I'm going to start here with one hand on my hip and my uh, right hand on the floor. So you're going to bend your left knee, shift over to the left, and then push back from the triangle pose. Bend your left knee, so fall of your right foot lifts away from the floor, lots of work for your heel, and then straighten back in the triangle pose. Bend your knee, or you try to my palms together, and then straighten in the triangle pose. One more time, bend your knee, fall of the right foot away from the floor, and then straighten in the triangle pose, full stretch. Okay, take a full breath in, full breath out, push down through your leg to come all the way up, and go to the second side. Oh! <laughs> okay, firm up your legs. Yoga teachers lose their balance too. Totally normal. So if you lose your balance, you could be a yoga teacher too. <laughs> Keep your legs steady and strong. Okay, hands at your hips, arms out of the sides, palms together, whatever rocks your world, but firm up your legs, anchor into your right, stretch over your left. Bring your left fingertips down, right arm up. Okay? So we'll do it a little bit differently on this side. So as you bend your right knee and shift to the right, palms come away from the floor, follow the left foot lifts. 
And then as you re-extend, stretch your arms and put your left foot down. If that's too much, just keep your palms together as you shift over to the right. And you don't have to re-extend, but if you like, we'll reach your arms up. Just give your brain a little bit more work here. Bend over to the right, and then stretch out, open it up. And then one more time, bend over to the right, lift the ball of your left foot away from the floor, and then re-extend out. Yeah. Do a full breath in. Whew. Full breath out. Push down through your right leg and lift yourself all the way back into stand. And then, wiggle yourself <laughs> back together. Give your hips a little shake, check your hair, do whatever you gotta do. Checking my hair because I'm trying to keep it out of the way and it could come out of its arrangement at any time. All right, so the next thing that you're gonna do requires a little bit of balance. So now that we've done all of this like side to side movement, opening up space in our hips, we wanna go forward and back also. Okay, so what you're gonna do, stand on your right leg, lift your left knee up, take your left knee out to the left, take it back behind you, Pull it in, bring it forward again. Got that? Left knee to the left. Turn your knee forward so your foot goes behind you. Take your whole leg behind you. Bring your knee back in. Okay, if you need support for balance here, you can always grab a chair, go over the wall, whatever you gotta do, but take your left knee out to the left. Turn your knee forward so your foot goes back. Bring it behind you. Bring your left knee up again. Okay, again, left knee to the left. Turn your knee forward, take it behind you. Pull your left knee forward again. Left knee to the left. <laughs> Turn your left knee forward. Take it behind you. Pull your left knee forward again. One more time. This way, left knee to the left. Turn your left knee forward. Take your whole leg back and bring your left knee up again. Now, turn your foot. Put your ankle on top of your knee and bend your knee, your right knee. The left ankle on top of your right knee, palms together and then come all the way up, out to the side, and then bring it back in again, lower down, and come back up again. So you're going in and out of this figure four, and up again, forward, figure four, left ankle on right knee, and then come all the way up, let go, and shake it out, second side. Stand on your left leg, and again, if you need to be steady, you can always do this. At a wall, you know, just casually hanging off the wall, right knee up and all that jazz. Okay, you can do it holding onto a chair, or you can do it without the wall and just work on balance. So whichever feels like the better idea for you. Right knee up, take your right knee to the right, tip your knee forward, swing your knee behind you, and pull it up again. Take your right knee to the right, tip your knee forward, swing your right leg behind you, and bring it up again. Right knee to the right, keep your foot active, that will help stabilize. Turn your right knee forward, bring it behind you, right knee up again, two more times. Right knee to the right, tip your knee forward, swing the whole thing behind you, back up again, one more time. Right knee forward, back up to the side, tip your knee forward, swing it behind you, bring it up again, and then turn from your hip, not your knee, turn your foot, Put your right knee on top of your ankle, your right foot on top of your left knee. Who knows what I just said? Bend your knees. Sit down. And then come all the way up, right knee out to the right. Right knee forward again. Tip it. So the whole thigh moves. Put your ankle on top of your knee. Sit down. So you're in figure four. And then come back up again. Right knee to the right. And one more time. Swing it in. Move your hip so your foot points to the left. Put your foot on top of your thigh, bend your knees, sit down. <sighs> Come all the way back up again, let it go. Okay, so now you can reverse it. You can take that left leg, take it knee up, back behind you, out to the side, forward, and then back again. Left knee out to the side, forward, <laughs> back again. Okay, so you're tilting forward with your torso as your uh, thigh goes back. Left knee to the side, forward. Now this time, try to take it back without tilting so far forward. Take your knee out to the side, Ooh, that's so much more work. Forward, and then one more time, take it back without tilting forward too much. Knee out to the side, left knee to the side, pull it all the way forward. And then cross your knee over in front. 
and then cross it behind. So you might need to touch the ground like that, no problem. And then let that go. We could do more of that, maybe another time. I like you. I want you to like this too, and also me. <laughs> so let's go the other way on your right leg. So right knee up, take your leg behind you. Take your right knee out to the side, forward again. Take your right knee back, right knee out to the side, pull your knee forward. And then take it back again, try not to tilt so much when you do. Take it out to the side, swing the whole thing forward, back to center. And one more time, knee back. Take it out to the side, pull it forward, back to the center, and then cross it over. And then take your leg behind you, cross your knee behind. Maybe see if you can not touch the floor, look like a speed skater. And then come all the way back up, shake that puppy up. All right, come on down into table pose. So now we're sort of going to do the ultimate hip opening, hip strengthening pose of them all, pigeon pose. So take your left foot forward into pigeon. A couple of things about pigeon, really important. Your knee should be slightly to the left of your left wrist. If you have more knee pain, your knee should be more to the center. It does not actually matter how far forward your shin is. In fact, if your hips feel tighter, have your shin further back. If your hips feel a little bit more open at this point, shin can be further forward. Okay, give your legs a squeeze. Okay? Now, pigeon pose, a lot of people think that just at this folded forward version, which is lovely, but we're after strength. Okay? So give your legs a squeeze and bring your hands to your hips. Hip strength, baby, right here. It's light strength too, it's a little bit of core strength, but it's hip strength. And keep in mind, if your low back hurts, Try scooting your left knee in, so your pigeon is just a little bit closer in, just a little bit tighter. Okay? If not, you can scoot your left leg further back, and make it a little bit more challenging for there. You okay, keep squeezing your legs in, don't worry about reaching your arms up. Just squeeze your legs inward. One more breath. <laughs> and smile. Lower your hands back down. You can go through a downward facing dog if you like, or a table if you prefer before going to the other side. So right knee forward with the pigeon. Right knee will go to the side of your right wrist. Your right foot will be a little bit more flexed. So it's not flexed unless your shin, your shin is more of a parallel rather, you're finding that. Back toes curl under, because that'll give you a lot more support. If you want more challenge, you can certainly put the top of your left foot down. Um, and you can still engage there. Just the tendency is to roll out a little bit to the left. So it's not as even through your hips. So just take it with a grain of salt and take it with, you know, what, what are you working on? What is going to give you the most access here? And for me, curling the back toes under just gives me a lot more access to strength, which is what I'm after. So squeeze your legs inward, hands to your hips. And remember, low back pain, put your hands down. Scoot your knee in and just be higher up because that will lessen the curve through low back. You want a little bit more action, scoot your left leg further back. And keep squeezing as you bring your hands to your hips. That'll last a long while. Maybe somewhere in the middle, too. But engage your legs, breathe. I'll try to breathe, too. Okay, one more breath in and out. Lower your hands to the floor. Okay. Now, Going to the mobility piece, what we're going to try to do is switch legs from pigeon without using hands. So shift over to your right hip, swing your right leg or left leg forward, put your left leg in front, free up your right leg, take your right leg back. This should look a little bit familiar. Shift over. Look, come on, no hands. <laughs> okay? If you need to, please, of course, put your hands down. But if you can, Go to your left butt, swing your right leg forward. Shift over to the right, okay, so you're leaning into your right hip. Take your left knee back. Okay, turn, like wiggle it, turn your left thigh in. There you go, vision. And try it again. Swing forward, right knee back, so left knee is forward. Wiggle it back, roll your thigh in. 
There you go. Sit into your left hip. Swing your right leg forward just one more time on both sides. Left leg back. Turn your left thigh in. <laughs> Vision. One more time. Left leg forward. Right leg back. Turn your right thigh in. Oh, that side's harder for me. There you go. Pigeon. And then sit. And then same idea. Because that was, that was challenging maybe a little bit. Definitely for me. What you might have noticed is that one side is a lot easier to negotiate than the other. For me, that was certainly the case. So taking my right leg back and shin being on my left side, that's way harder for me. Whereas being on the right side, like I could maneuver a lot more, so like a little bit more mobility there and strength. So now, <laughs> trying to go cross-legged. Without using your hands. This will feel a whole lot easier. <laughs> After doing the gym. Okay, so just coming back and forth. You might feel your core engaged too, so you're rocking back and forth. But just thinking of this as hip strength and mobility. Now you can add Baddha Konasana without using your hands. Okay, there are other ones that you can go into. Agni Stambhasana. So Agni Stambhasana is also known as like fire log pose. Here's the truth about that Sanskrit. Agni means fire, but Stamba means pillar. You can probably get that if you have tighter hips. Pillar of fire, am I right? <laughs> so it looks like stacked fire logs, I get. But now see if you can switch again. So right ankle on top of left knee. You know, keep in mind with this pose, you might be higher up. Okay, if your hips are tighter, if they're not feeling any looser yet from this practice, there might be a bigger gap. For today, that's totally fine. So you can switch again without using your hands. You gotta work your legs. Switch again. Do your actors. So remember, in Agni Sambhasana, shins are stacked, your ankles are directly on top and below your knees. Let's do one more time. Left on top of right. So all of this seated switching, and then come back to Konasana without using your hands. So Baddha Konasana, soles of your feet together, knees are wide. And walk your fingertips forward, stretch out. And that actually feel kind of nice to be here at this point, just breathing. Breathing into this pose after doing all that work with your hips. You can even then come on back up without using your hands. Stretch your legs out the sides. Toes pointed towards the ceiling. And come forward just a little bit. And breathe. Toes active. Hips steady and strong. That was quite a workout. I don't know about you, <laughs> but that was quite a workout for me, creating a little bit more mobility in my hips and strength in my legs and hips all at the same time. So make your way back up, and if you can, wiggle back in without using your hands. All right. Well, how are you feeling after all of that? We're done. <laughs> We're done for today. Um, but how are you feeling after all? How are your hips feeling? How are your legs feeling? Maybe come out to stand if you can without using your hands. Give a little wiggle. Maybe even try this forward bend again and just see, oh yeah, so much more space. Right? You can go back to some of that stuff we did at the beginning and just see. I know for me, I feel like there's a great deal more mobility in my hips, but I also don't feel like so loose that I can like tear something. Do you know what I mean? That I'm, I've overstretched. Instead, I actually feel like I've engaged the muscles around my pelvis and created a lot more steadiness there. So I feel pretty confident in this right now. And I really hope that you do too. Either way, I would love to hear how you are feeling after doing this practice. I hope that you're feeling kind of like a super, <laughs> to my superhero stance. Hope you're feeling kind of like a superhero. Um, but I would love to hear how you're feeling in the comments below or what else you might like to see on this channel. And don't forget to see more content like this. Hit that subscribe button in the bottom right corner. 
For now, I will see you next time on the mat. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and enjoy those open but steady hips. Until next time, <laughs> bye.